leaked maps and documents allegedly obtained by the KGB and if accurate, the Russians believe that a high-tech German faction did not surrender and not only escaped to Antarctica, but were responsible for many of the flying saucer sightings of the late 40s and early 1950s. A lot of strange news of recent regarding Antarctica. Strange sightings, strange trips to this unknown land. This frozen tundra, we have John Kerry visiting it. We have the Orthodox Russian Orthodox Church bishop visiting it after having a meeting with Pope Francis, the first time in over a thousand years that uh, the leader of the Catholic Church and the Russian Orthodox Church actually met. So they both met in Cuba. Russian Orthodox uh, Archbishop went and visited Antarctica. Also during this trip, when John Kerry was going to go on November 13th, there was an, a famous uh, mountain climber who had conquered Mount Everest, uh, Sir Ranulph Fiennes, who wanted to go as well on November 13th to Antarctica, but he was denied. And this was the exact time in which John Kerry went. Why was he denied is the question. Why is it uh, even Barack Obama recently went to Antarctica? And of course, we also have these strange sightings of recent. And we have these strange sightings of recent within Antarctica. As you can see, three pyramids right here, sort of like the pyramids of Giza in Egypt. Very strange. You even have these smaller pyramids next to the larger all found in Antarctica. This is a recent find. This is located not too far from England's official Antarctic base. Of course, then there's also some conspiracy with regards to these pyramids that perhaps this is where maybe some of these dignitaries have been coming and visiting of recent, knowing that this was recently found. Of course, we know the past of uh, Nazi Germany visiting the Antarctic, bringing in many ships, building some sort of secret base in Antarctica. And of course, we also have Operation High Jump with Admiral Byrd coming in. And we don't know exactly know what occurred there, but shortly after we have this Antarctic Treaty for which no one now can easily go to Antarctica, that it's banned that anybody can go there unless they have some sort of scientific reason to be there and they get approved. It's just kind of strange, right? You have all these strange things that all connect together. With the proliferation of new technology, such as Google Earth, where you can tap into various satellite imagery uh, via the internet, you have a lot of people doing research, trying to find various strange phenomena in Antarctica and of course other places. Here you have this massive uh, cavern. It appears to be just a cavern at first glance, but if you if you look at some of the other angles of the footage, you can clearly see that uh, this is this is man-made, and this appears to be some sort of entrance to an underground base. I mean, really, this is not natural. There's no way you can look at this as being a natural formation. Uh, so this is one of many finds of recent with Antarctica, various underground base entrances. Here's another oddity here. here appears it could be some sort of entrance as well. Uh, it was broadcast in Russia in May 2006. And of course there's other imagery such as this one here, which appears to be potentially like four tanks and something crashing into the tundra we don't exactly know what it is of course it's an aerial photo it, it's difficult to make it out at such a distance but it would be very interesting if we could somehow get a closer look and of course recently wikileaks even had some revealed antarctica pictures 24 pictures and you have to ask yourself why would julian assange be releasing pictures of antarctica and of course you have also all this controversy with these dignitaries recent uh, visiting Antarctica right after the release of this this new find of these these pyramid structures 
in Antarctica, which I showed you earlier, that appear to be like in the almost the same formation as the pyramids in Giza. It's very strange. And we're talking Antarctica here. Okay, we're talking Antarctica. Extremely cold. There's no way that any human in a standard working condition could do that. And of course, if you check into some of the, the mere costs of, of living in Antarctica, it's just insane. Okay, we're talking a gallon of gas in Antarctica costs $30. Okay, uh, and, you know, there's some people I've read about their their living in Antarctica and the costs associated with various things. Basically, everything costs 10 times as much there. So you could imagine just how much manpower it would take to build these pyramids. It's just insane just to think about. And of course, there's this, this secret history of its past to where if you look at some of these older ancient maps, it shows Antarctica as actually being uh, far less covered with ice. So obviously this ice is more of a recent thing over the last so many thousand years. Uh, perhaps in the, in the ancient past, Antarctica wasn't covered by ice. And so it's really interesting to, to look into all this. And there's even some references in the book. I think it's the book of Enoch. I can't remember which part uh, where it talks about him going to the uttermost parts of the earth and it being a frozen tundra and this is where he had entered into another dimension uh it i, I can't remember the passage offhand i remember reading it and i thought it was very strange sounding and it sort of correlates with some of what people have been saying about antarctica being a gateway to potentially another dimension in certain places and of course we saw admiral bird talk about uh the, the, the section of Antarctica below Central America as being completely uninhabited, uh, never been sent, seen by man. He was talking about past the pole. What's past the pole? Of course, if we assume heliocentrism, you're talking about, well, it's the other side of the Earth, right? What if it's not that? Okay, that well, that's the question. What if it's not that? And are, are they hiding something? Okay, we're going to get into that next. Okay, 1773, on uh, 30 January 1774, James Cook uh, reaches 71 degrees 10 uh, minutes south, farther south, coming within 75 miles of the Antarctic mainland without seeing it. Okay, um, later reports said that uh, during three voyages lasting three years and eight days, Captain Cook and, and crew sailed a total of 60 thousand miles along the Antarctic coastline, never once finding an inlet or path through or beyond the massive glacial wall. So the other question is, well, how come ships don't go off the sea if it's flat? How come ships don't fall off the edge? Well, here's why you don't fall off the edge. There's a 200 to 300 foot high wall <laughs> that is the coastline of Antarctica. It's the border that scripture says is keeping everything in. Nothing's going past that. Um, but yet the earth is 25,000 miles in circumference, allegedly. It took him 60,000 miles to circumnavigate Antarctica. This guy Shackleton goes down there on the, um, and I think I put this in my original blog. He goes down there on the, on the, the name of the ship is the Nimrod. He goes oh, down wow. there on the Nimrod and it's called the Nimrod Expedition. I'm like, seriously? Okay. Nimrod's goal was to reach into heaven, right? Um, yeah, the Nimrod Expedition. So you can click on the link I got there and read all about the Nimrod Expedition, British Antarctic Expedition, otherwise known as the Nimrod Expedition. And it was on the, the name of the ship was the Nimrod right here. Okay. Nimrod was trying to reach into heaven by going up. Could it be that these guys are trying to go out, <laughs> try to find the, the, the ground floor? I don't know. But I mean, why do you? And this is what really got me is they did so in 1908. 1908. I'm like, really? 1908? Seriously? 1908 is when Nimrod was born, uh, according to my other... Let me see. Um, what did I put in here? Uh, this is one of my other blogs. Yeah. Okay. The 350 post-flood years of Noah's life. This is a chart I did last year and the follow-up chart, the Nimrod-Abraham timeline. Nimrod was born in 1908 AM or years since creation. And then 1908, see, 1907 to 1909, well, that's 1908, <laughs> Nimrod went to Antarctica. I'm like, I mean, you can't write this stuff. I mean, 
wow, okay, so they go down there, a whole bunch of people are, you know, from that point on, once they start finding ways to get through the ice to get there, more and more expeditions and, and better ships are, are built and, and used to get there. Then you get to Admiral Byrd. Now, when Admiral Byrd goes down there several times, and one of the operations is called Operation High Jump. And you're like, oh, oh geez. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Operation High Jump. Operation High Jump. Really? Operation High Jump. <laughs> I mean, you know, because they went out there with aircraft carriers and airplanes and stuff. You know, some, some real heavy equipment and stuff like that. Operation High Jump. So then he gets on TV, national TV, and he does this radio show where he talks about all of the... Um, natural resources down there. I mean, coal and uranium and stuff that fuel the world forever. It's wonderful. And you can go on YouTube and look up the Admiral Byrd um, news interview. I think it was on CBS. And it's so it's wonderful. And all these nations are going down there, you know, Russia and Japan, all these nations are going down there. Check it out. Well, then he goes down after that interview. They go down on the next mission, which I believe was called Operation Deep Freeze. And then all of a sudden everything changes. Everybody pulls out, they leave Antarctica, and all the nations that were go down there doing whatever they were doing signed a treaty, the Antarctic Treaty, and I believe it was 1958 or somewhere thereabouts, saying, nope, um, nobody can stake a claim to Antarctica, and if you're going to go down there, you can only go down there for scientific reasons under carefully restricted guidance, um, but it's not a free-for-all. Nobody can just, you know, hey, I'm going to go check out Antarctica and do a high jump on my own. Nope, can't do it. So wow, wow. when I look at the nations that signed the Antarctic Treaty and I look at the nations that are putting forward, quote unquote, space videos of the Earth, eh, they're the same people. So from if, if I was to put on my tinfoil hat and play the conspiratorial uh, role here, there definitely appears to be some very suspicious things that took place. Then all of a sudden NASA is formed. And then uh, simultaneously, you have Russia and the United States doing high altitude nuclear bomb testing. They're blowing up nuclear nuclear bombs high up in the atmosphere, and they called it Operation Fishbowl. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> I mean, you can't make this stuff up, man. I mean, they're calling it Operation Fishbowl. Okay? So, I mean, if they're trying to keep us from having cons conspiracy mindsets, they're, they're really not helping out much with the names there. You know, the Nimrod mission goes down there, Operation High Jump, and oh yeah, we, we're going to all leave there because apparently we found something, and now we're going to start blowing things up high up in the atmosphere. And if you go on YouTube and do a search for Operation Fishbowl High Altitude Nuclear Testing and watch the explosions that took place and how, how they look, I got to tell you, man, it looks like they hit a dome and they, like they were it's, it's almost as if they found the end of the Truman Show in Antarctica, and then they said, I wonder how high this thing is, and started blowing off bombs. And then you're going to tell me that we went from Sputnik in 1958 to men standing on the moon uh, in 1969. You're telling me in 11 years, we went from ideas scribbled on napkins to putting men on the moon with technology less sophisticated than my iPhone. Thank <laughs> you.